Good morning, namaste, hola, bonjour and marhaban. This is Namya Joshi, your host for the day. Welcome to Each One Teach 10, an amazing world of STEM, which is an inspiring venture where we will be discussing that STEM is part of every day for every kid. We all will learn together how to build a STEM culture. And we are talking about kids here. and it's a special day for the kids that is children's day and i'm joined by a very special guest on my first episode who inspires me a lot she is none other than a lady with a heart of gold and warm smile mrs bupinder gogia principal satpur mithil school ludhiana punjab india she is an expert in school education and management an enthusiastic mathematician and an it geek A very warm welcome, ma'am. Thank you, Namia, and thank you for the wonderful introduction. Thank you so much, ma'am. So, ma'am, could you please introduce yourself to our audience, please? Right. Uh, I'm Bhupinder Gogia from Satpal Mittal School, Ludhiana, a city which is known as the Manchester of India. My role is to empower my teachers to bring great work to this world by being open to learning. adaptable to change having a strong connect with their own self and with the students and having most important having the strong conviction that each of them has the ability to bring a dif- make a difference in the child's life i'm also a teacher of mathematics and uh, i bring joy to the class by math- making mathematics simple to understand and something that we have missed for all these years is mathematics can truly be inspirational so that's what i do namia that's very inspiring ma'am and it's very inspiring to have you here and you motivate us a lot ma'am so i have missed your pep talks which you gave us in the morning assembly almost every day during this lockdown i remember that you said once that you can find stem everywhere that's very interesting so please tell us more about that yeah so namia uh, i been always a uh, very passionate about mathematics but the reason why i have been passionate is that um, i have learned maths for a purpose different from uh, just scoring in the exams or doing well in calculations for me mathematics is inspiring look around you you'll see that everything in nature is so beautifully designed so you can see everything having such a beautiful structure you take the human body artificial intelligence is trying to replicate the human system but please understand you know there is a golden ratio which has uh, in the entire body that means there is a ratio in which every part of the body is linked to the other and it's it's so beautifully designed not only that look around you all flowers have patterns of some numbers called fibonacci numbers now fibonacci numbers those who of you who are in mathematics or those who have learned mathematics or programming you must have learned that fibonacci numbers are 1 plus 1 is 2 1 1 2 3 5 8 11 12 Eleven eight, then you eight plus five is thirteen, so forth. Now what it says is, you can see these Fibonacci numbers everywhere in your environment. You look at the leaf arrangement on a plant. You look at the flowers. Have you seen? You know, flowers have either three petals, or they'll have five petals, or they'll have eight petals, or thirteen petals. This Fibonacci number is running everywhere. If you look at the sunflower. there are spiral patterns which is existing in that right you look at a pineapple the cone of the pineapple you know each cone of the pineapple has a hexagonal structure then i mean everything around you is has mathematics with it so i think where we have missed on and that's what i tell students that look around you this universe has been so beautifully designed so you know so mathematically designed i mean just look around in your house also if you look at a glass or if you look at a bottle 
just try to see. I mean, instead of just looking at it at like a bottle, whether it's cylindrical, whether it's cuboid, whether it is hexagonal, what is the shape that you have around you? And, and start looking at it with a different perspective. So if you just look around the world by being more alert, more awake, more aware, you will see that each part of the existence has stem with it. Yes, ma'am, I truly agree with you. So we often hear a lot about soft skills. According to you, what are soft skills and why should the educators or teachers focus on them while teaching the students? And ma'am, I know you are a visionary leader for us. So how are you ensuring that the students and educators are prepared for this? Namia, let me ask, start by asking you a question. Yes. What do you think is, uh, which teacher, when, when you try to read, look at your teachers, all your teachers have been good. But if you look at your favorite teacher, what do you like most about her? She is polite. Um, she explains all the concepts easily and gently so that we understand it. And she never hesitates for repeating the concept in the class. So what you learned from your teacher is that there's, apart from just the subject competency, if you're able to connect with people, if you're able to share your knowledge, if you're able to help the other children learn, you know, think critically, then that teacher becomes your favorite, isn't it? So small yes, schools is anything that makes, that adds on value to your subject content. Now, for example, and why I say this is, see, soft skills is all about um, having compa compassion, having empathy, having, uh, you know, having this uh, resilience within you to, to face anything that comes up your way and uh, to be able to love oneself and love the world at large. I think if you're learning, if you learn how to love oneself, uh, you'll be able to love the world at large also. So soft skills are all those other skills which you need to survive in the world of tomorrow. For example, you need collaboration to survive tomorrow. You need to know how to communicate. You need critical thinking. You need creativity. You need digital citizenship. Okay. Now, these are yes, the skills yeah. which you need to survive in the world to come. So you are asked, you are asked me a question that how are we training our teachers? Firstly, let me tell you, Namia, that if you agree with me that teachers after parents are the most influential people in the child's life. And yes, they are totally the agree. most important resource we have to prepare our teachers, our children to have appropriate skills, enabling them to thrive in the workplace of the future and the ability to continue to retrain throughout their lives. See, teachers basically are the architects of our future. So it's very important that teachers are trained to be innovators, adventurers, and seekers. Now, everything starts at the leadership level. So it's very pivotal that the, cult the school leader creates a cultural climate for their school and sets a vision and direction. Now, you, you have met Mr. Rakesh Bharti Mittal, who's at the helm of affairs, our chairman. You have yes, seen him, you, you, when, you come, you, when he comes to school, you see him interacting with the peons, you see him shaking hands with the drivers, and then you, the way he inspires everything. He has given, you, given us all a culture of openness, a culture of learning, a culture of mutual respect, a culture of collaboration, of acceptance. So when you're able to create this culture, then your teachers feel appreciated when they do something new. Like for example, you don't need to do something great to be appreciated. If I try anything that I've read somewhere or learned on the net, and I try it inside the classroom, and I share it, like in our school, we have a school Padlet which shares the teacher's daily achievements. So if you post it on the Padlet, you get many likes, loves, and there are some teachers who are you know, able to pick up the concept which you have put up on the Padlet and implicate, you know, and apply it into their own classrooms. So you have, in our school, we have created that culture. And that, that is the only way in which you can help your teachers to prepare your children for the future. 
That's absolutely encouraging, ma'am. And I'm gaining a lot of beneficial knowledge from you today. So some educators might face problem teaching the lessons in the class. So how do you think that those educators can teach LTTs using STEM? As teachers, we have a chance to broaden our student perspectives and explore local and global issues to investigate solutions. And when it is integrated into students' learning, it helps to create awareness about the importance of key issues within the global goals plays in our life. It is very vital for us to prepare our students for the 21st century skills. To be able by, by having learning activities that combines curriculum with interdisciplinary connections, fosters global competency, and empowers students to utilize technology in a meaningful way in order to solve real world problems and address authentic audiences. See, in our school, the way we have done is we have integrated SDGs into our entire curriculum. So whether it's mathematics, whether it is science, whether it's social studies, whether it is um, languages, we have integrated the SDGs into our curriculum. So we are not doing it some, as something different. It is part of our being. See, and you must have uh, noticed that we have engaged ourselves in various global uh, projects and uh, using ski Skype and Teams. And I think uh, if you remember, you've been a part of the Everyday Kindness Project, No Poverty, yes, Zero Hunger, Bungie Buddies Earth Day, uh, hashtag DIY for Earth, Innovation Project, Climate Action Project, Say No to Plastic, converted tough lessons into STEM using Minecraft. See, the ability to connect with experts in the field, sharing ideas with other students, or showcasing projects wrapped around the global goals via Skype or Teams allows the student to learn without, with no boundaries. Real world problems and STEM teaching should be together. Wow, you are a true inspiration for me and all our audience here, ma'am. So where can we find you online? My Twitter handle is uh, MS Bupin, at the rate MS Bupinder. I'm also on LinkedIn. And not only this, I can be contacted through the school website, www.satpalmittalschool.org. Thank you, ma'am, for that. So before we go off, any message that you would like to give to our audience? Namia, uh, something which I'm very passionate about is that each of us is so special to the world. Each of us is so beautifully made. Uh, so look around you. The world is so beautiful and each element in this universe has been crafted so beautifully. Each one is so unique in its being. If you remember, I, in the uh, assembly, I had read a small parable called a pine is a pine and a bamboo is a bamboo. So if you look at it, if you remember that story, I, it was all about that a bamboo plant fe felt that, you know, I wish, um, see, I, let me just, uh, a bamboo was dying. And so it said, I wish I was tall as the pine. And the pine was, you know, had this feeling that I wish I was as lovely as a rose plant. The rose plant had an issue that I wish I was, you know, some other flower which it was asking. So if you look about, everybody is pretending. Authenticity is lost. Everybody is trying to show that he's somebody else. Just look at ourselves. You know, I really tell you, this is something that I've learned for my own self. You are pretending to be somebody else and you can only be yourself. There's no other way. There never has been. You will remain yourself. You can enjoy it and bloom or you can wither away if you condemn it. You are here because this existence needs you as you are. Otherwise, somebody else would have been here. The existence would not have helped you to be here would not have created you. You are fulfilling something very essential, something very fundamental, 
as you are. And when you have this connect with yourself, believe me, Namia, you'll be able to see, uh, you'll be able to, uh, you know, uh, find beauty or math. You'll be able to think creatively. You'll be able to uh, collaborate with others because you are peaceful with yourself. So when you love yourself, you can love others. You're so easily able to collaborate with people. You're able to make a difference in the other person's life. And believe me, the more alert, awake, aware you are, you'll be able to see patterns, you know, mathematical patterns in everything, in the chirping of the birds, in the dance sequences, in the music notes, anything, you name, name it, and you'll be able to see stem in it. But for that, you have to be alert, awake, aware. Yes, ma'am. It was a pleasure of mine to have you today on this special day. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you, Namia, and all the best to you. I am very honored so that much. I'm on your first session. Uh, honor for me, actually. So thank you, and I wish you all the best in the time to come. Thank you, Namia. Thank you so much, ma'am. And I strongly believe that you all will resonate with my guest who believes that STEM can enable all the educators to give their students opportunities and children can enjoy to the fullest. Till then, each one teach dance.